Lanchester 40 horsepower tourer 1921. One of the greatest names in the history of the automobile, Frederick Lanchester began his career as an engineer at the Ford Gas Engine CO of Saltley, near Birmingham, where he rose to become its works manager and chief designer. He patented a pendulum minutia governor while there, and would go on to file a further 425 patents in the course of a remarkably inventive life. With his younger brother George taking his place as works manager, Frederick began experimenting with small gasoline engines. He began work on what would be the UK's first four-wheeled petrol car of entirely native design in 1895, producing a tiny handful of prototypes, and in December 1899 the Lanchester Engine Company Limited was formed to manufacture motor cars. During 1906 cars were built, all retained for the company's own use, with deliveries to paying customers commencing in 1901. The first production Lanchester was powered by a horizontally opposed twin-cylinder engine of 4.0 liters, which drove via three-speed up a cyclic gearbox and worm drive rear axle. Larger twins were introduced, but by 1904 the general expectation was that engines of this size should have four cylinders, and it was while Frederick was designing such a car that his company went bust. The firm was reorganized as the Lanchester Motor Company Limited and duly introduced its first four-cylinder model, a two-liter rated at 20 horsepower, towards the end of 1904. Despite the engine now being vertical and at the front, Lanchester's established bonnetless look was maintained by mounting the power unit between the driver and front passenger. All production Lanchesters would follow this layout up to 1914. Unusually, one lever operated the clutch, gears, and main brake. In 1906 a six-cylinder 3.7-liter model based on the existing four was introduced, which was followed by larger models of both engine types. By this time Frederick Lanchester had become increasingly disillusioned with the company that bore his name, and George began to take on more of the design and engineering responsibilities. With bonneted cars now established as the norm, the bluff-fronted Lanchesters were looking increasingly old-fashioned in appearance, and in 1913, at the director's instructions, the first conventional design was introduced, the Sporting 40, which was the first Lanchester designed by George. Representing a quantum leap in style, this new type of Lanchester was powered by a 5-liter side valve 6 that was carried beneath a lengthy bonnet. The result was one of the most stylish sports cars of its era and a worthy rival for Rolls-Royce's Silver Ghost. Only a handful had been completed when the outbreak of WWI saw Lanchester's factory redirected onto munitions and aero engine manufacture. After the war the Sporting 40 was replaced in 1919 by a similar-looking, but completely different, 40-horsepower design, as seen here. Lanchester's new 40 boasted a 6,178cc six-cylinder overhead camshaft engine driving via three-speed up a cyclic gearbox and worm final drive. Springs were half-elliptic the front and cantilever at the rear, underslung. Like its pre-war forebear, the new 40 was very fast and, when new, a very expensive car in the Rolls-Royce class. This rare survivor retains its original Lanchester five-seat open touring body and was first owned by a Mr. O'Hanlon of Bromley, Kent. Correspondence with the O'Hanlon family is on file together with an old-style continuation logbook, issued 1934, listing Mallinson's motor tours of Windermere's owner and the taxation class as Hackney, taxicab. Mallinson's licensed the Lanchester from June to December each year up to 1940. The car was then stored by the Bradshaw family of Preston until June 1970 when it was purchased by the late Graham Pilmer Bedford from a Mr. Terence Talbot of Litham St. Anne's for the sum of 800, receipt on file. 5050 is now owned by the Pilmer Bedford family, they are Lanchester enthusiasts and the car shares a motor house with other examples of the mark. Graham Pilmer Bedford was an enthusiastic and active VCC member and in the 1970s was the Lanchester Owners Club Registrar and very friendly with Frances Houghton's Tot, the former VCC president and Lanchester Authority. Missing parts were replaced and the car repainted in two-tone green, as it has been originally, while the interior was re-upholstered by Connolly to the original pattern. Mechanically refreshed, 
Mark 5050 was back on the road again in 1971 and has been in regular use ever since, taking part in the Golden Jubilee Rally and many tours. The car incorporates the following departures from factory specification, 1924 tight brakes, larger drums, footbrake to rear wheels, handbrake to transmission, 1924 inlet manifold and carburetor, modern radiator core, later bonnet catches, and a modern ignition coil and condenser. Presented in running condition, the Lanchester comes with three folders containing the following, handwritten notes detailing its history, assorted correspondence, numerous expired MOTS, a substantial quantity of bills, photocopied technical literature, and a current V5C registration certificate.